Whoa! Butter poached lobster, leeks, palm maxime, and red beet essence. What? <laughs> Welcome back to Jamie and Chef. I'm just not gonna give up without a fight. All right, we return to the French Laundry Cookbook from Thomas Keller. And this is episode two of this new series I have where I'm gonna be following along to a new famous chef, a famous cookbook. Every six episodes kind of get into it and then I'll move on to another one. So last time we made Thomas Keller's signature dish, which is oysters and pearls. And that my friends was, so now I'm like, well, what are some other groundbreaking recipes coming out of this book? And right at the top of the list was this. Butter poached lobster with leeks, palm maxime, and red beet essence. I was reading that this kind of went like viral or whatever the equivalent of that is in the restaurant world. Now all these chefs now poach their lobster the TK way. <laughs> and uh, they, or they adapt this recipe or they tweak it or they use parts of it or they flat out steal it. I'm not pointing fingers, actually I don't even know. I'm just gonna whip this thing up today. Casual weeknight meal, it's no biggie. Shall we get to work? Actually, I'm joking, I'm terrified right now. So the hard part out of the way first, our lobster. So if you take the lobster out of its shell before fully cooking it, you have more control over its taste and texture. I hope you can't hear this. Steep the lobster just enough so that it will pull cleanly away from the shell, leaving the interior raw so you can treat it just like raw fish. All right, this is a completely different method than I'm used to. Uh, this, you know, usually I boil the lobster and before I do that, I take the knife and I go right through the head and it puts it out of its misery where I'm steeping it. And uh, I don't believe you're supposed to off it before you uh, steep it. So uh, I got two saucepans instead of one big one, three quarts of water in each and they both got to come up to a boil. Quarter cup of distilled vinegar into each saucepan. And what I'm gonna do is take my lobster into the tight fitting Dutch oven. So apparently this calms the lobster down if you kind of just stroke the top here. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want to remove these elastic bands. I don't think they, jeez. I don't think they taste right. So this is a brief blanching, enough to kill the lobster without actually cooking it. It's gonna free the flesh. All right, here we go. I got a 1.7 pound lobster, so this is two and a half minutes. It's essential to work with the steeped lobster while they are still hot. If they're cool, then the fat and the meat will congeal and the meat will be difficult to remove from the shell. That lobster is 100% dead. It looked like it died instantly. There we go. It says keep the water, so keep it. Using a towel, hold the hot lobster and grasp it at its tail and twist to pull and detach. Oh, sh Whoa! The lobster meat came right out of the shell instantly. That's amazing. Okay, off go the claws. Claws go back into the hot water for five minutes. Lobster tail, what do I do with it? Okay, so lay the tail meat on its back and cut lengthwise in half through the middle. Remove the vein running through the top of the meat. Lay the meat on a paper towel lined plate. So I've got to cover that with plastic wrap and that goes in the fridge. Five minutes, right? Yeah, I'm gonna remove the claws from the hot water. Twist off each knuckle to remove it. Twist off each knuckle. Towels work. The knuckle is the two joints that connect the claw to the body. Hold the claw in your hand and pull down to loosen the pincer. Push it to either side to crack it and pull straight off. Now ideally the cartilage from the inside of the claw should be attached to the pincer and the claw meat should remain intact. Still holding the claw, crack the top of the shell with the heel of a knife about three quarter inch from the joint where the knuckle was attached. Now the meat should just slide right out. Come on. Yes. Yes, along the smooth outside edge of the knuckle, I gotta use scissors to cut right through. There's the knuckle meat. Add that with the tail meat on the plate and back into the fridge. Bring over the body, the 
Shut up, fridge. Pull back and discard the top shells. How about that? Fridge, shut the hell up, man. There we go. Okay, top shell is off. Shirt, sleeve, lifted. Out goes the tamale. Hot tamale. Different type of tamale. Frickin' fridge. Unfortunately, when I'm talking, you become a nuisance. So now I need to remove the tamale, the sack behind the head. Anything else? Feathery lungs. Oh yeah, that's all the stuff there. Where are the feathery lungs? That sounds frightening. Tamale in the row, I just don't remember if I need to save that. So just keep it there. I will be left with the body and legs. Rinse them thoroughly under cold water. All this stuff. Okay, this goes in the freezer. We don't need it today. It's for if like you want to make a stock or something. You gonna behave? So glad that part's out of the way and we can move on to something else. Also, this place cleans up pretty nice. Before we move on to the next part, let me just say something about killing a lobster. That was my fourth kill. Each one of them has been well documented on this channel. And I must say it doesn't get easier, but also it does. Because on the very first attempt of me doing that, I was all up in my head, I was freaking out. And uh, yeah, it had to be done, but I didn't want to do it. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. <sighs> this time around, I just, you know, just get it done, man. So if you love lobster meat, it comes with the territory, unfortunately. We're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to something else. How about butter? We got two different types of butter things that we gotta make. A clarified butter and a burr monte. So I have one stick of butter in a tiny little saucepan. Whoa. And I need to make clarified butter. I've done it before in the Julia series. I've been told that I did it incorrectly. So there's instructions here on how to do it. So I'm just gonna focus and do it right. And if I have any extras, I can freeze it later. That's what this book says. So. Get it on a low heat. Melt that without stirring to start. Once the butter has melted, it'll separate into three layers. Skim off and discard the foamy layer of milk solids floating on the top. Clear yellow butter beneath it is the clarified butter. Carefully pour it off into the container, leaving the milky liquid behind. No, it doesn't get left behind. Damn it, my strainer isn't that good. I do have an idea though. If I had a cheesecloth, do I have a cheesecloth? Yes, I do. Okay, let's try that again. That's the stuff. And that is our clarified butter. Oop. Okay, next up, we're gonna make this Bermonté. It says, this is the workhorse sauce at the French Laundry. We use an awful lot of butter without actually serving a lot of butter. Butter is an emulsification of butter, fat, milk, solids, and water as evident with what we just did with the uh, clarified butter. And if you melt it, the three components separate. We saw that. Bermonté, a few drops of water and chunks of butter whisked over moderate heat is a method of melting butter while maintaining the emulsification. So what I'm gonna do here is melt one and a half pounds, 680 something grams of butter in a saucepan with only a tablespoon of water. That's what it says. Uh, Okay, coming in hot and heavy with this tablespoon of water. So I bring that scant amount of water to a boil. <laughs> Once it starts boiling, turn the temperature to low. Look at that, matching the photo. It's gonna start adding butter chunks. Start with that. Keep it whisking. I just keep doing this until all the butter's gone. Bit by bit, this will emulsify. Look at that. Now he says that if I'm not gonna use all this today, which there's no way in hell I'm going to, that is one and a half pounds of melted butter. Oh, sorry, burr monte. Uh, then I, um, what do I do? Then I just keep it in the fridge until the next time I need to use it. And since this is a workhorse sauce, it's gonna come up again. I know it. And if not, then I just use it as melted butter in the future. It's not a big deal. Julia child recipes will have that covered. Moving on to the potatoes. Palm Maxime. Yukon gold potatoes here. Okay, so I need one large one. 12 ounces worth, or how about many small ones? Oh wait, but since you're halving this recipe, you'll need two. Give them a peel. Inevitably, this was gonna happen on this show. Unfortunately, it is today, but we have to work on our mandolin skills. 
Ambulance on standby, you're gonna need it. Trust me. So, I hate this fucking thing, but it has to be done. What do I have to do? Don't want things to get too bloody, so I got my little mandolin glove here. It's gonna keep me safe. Okay, so I know what I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna slice these paper thin with the mandolin, but I need them to be rounds. But I'm gonna worry about that in a second, because I have an idea. I have a really great idea. How did that do? Absolutely, uh, terribly. Oven's been preheated to, uh, 300. Oh, that's amazing. That is paper thin. Very pumped up right now. Successful mission. I can use a mandolin. Look at me go. We could even go a bit thinner if I wanted to. You know what? Why don't we try for thinner? We're gonna try for thinner. That's as thin as it goes. I have these circular cookie cutters here. Well, they could be anything. There can be palm Maxine cutters for today. So get the smallest, get the one that's gonna work best for this mission. I think it's that. Oh dear, we're on to something. Thank you. And let's get these paper thin circular slices of potatoes for my palm maxim, <laughs> you know. All right, get them in the bowl. Okay, so in the bowl with the potatoes, toss the rounds with the clarified butter. I feel like it's just enough butter to coat these things. So just, yeah, boy. Get your hands dirty, man, because it's hard to separate them all. Make sure that they're all covered. Arrange them on the mat, overlapping slices by half to form a solid sheet of potatoes, or lay them in overlapping circles. Okay, so that's what I was thinking, like that. We only need one for the dish today, so in the end, whatever is the nicest will win. I'm thinking about like plating this thing in the end, and right, like the lobster tail is not that big, and this is, this is going on top. You're breaking off a piece of this Palm Maxime and placing it on top of the lobster. And since... I think that's too big. So like that. Unless you've been to the restaurant, I guess you would know 100% what this is supposed to look like. I looked at images online. I can't really, I can't tell. So I think this is sufficient. Maybe I book myself in for that restaurant. It's kind of like a work expense. This goes in the oven. All right, good luck. 45 to 50 minutes. I don't know where I'm going. I still have lots to do. Similar to the potatoes, I need to take some leeks <laughs> and I need to slice these into rounds. Uh, with the mandolin, I think I'm gonna use the mandolin. I'm gonna cut off the little part there and then I only need the light green and the white part. So this all is gonna be used later. I need my mandolin. <laughs> Kidding, I'm not gonna do that with the mandolin. It's not up there. Okay, that's thin. Okay, I get it. Okay, those are thin, those are nice. Yes, I like that. Is the question is, would Tom, Tom, would TK like that just a bit thinner? Oh, that's thin. Slicing up a leek on the mandolin, how about you? Shui. What I gotta do is blanch these. There's a specific way to do it. So raw green vegetables appear dull because of a layer of gas develops between the skin and the pigment. Heat releases the gas and the pigment floods to the surface. But this happens fast and pretty soon as the vegetable cooks, the acids and enzymes in the vegetable are released, dulling the green color. The challenge is to fully cook a vegetable before you lose that color, which means cooking it as fast as possible. And there are three key factors to achieve this. So first, blanch in a large quantity of water relative to the amount of vegetables you're cooking. So you won't significantly lower the boiling temperature when you add the cold vegetables. Second, use a lot of salt, about a cup of salt per gallon. Cup of salt. The water should taste like the ocean. 
And finally, stop the vegetables from cooking by plunging them into a large quantity of ice water. The end results are dramatic. I, mean, I love the drama. Say that's around six and a half quarts. Okay, so I figure I need around one and a half cups of salt. <laughs> I don't even think I have that much right now. Aye. Take water out of that then. Then you don't need to use as much salt. Prepped as much as I could prep for this recipe. I didn't realize that salt would be the issue. So I have half a cup of salt. <laughs> Save me. Thank you. So what I was thinking is I put these rounds into my sieve and then dunk that into the boiling water. What do you think? Wash them. No! I overdid the potatoes. 45 to 50 minutes, the book says. I did this for 35 minutes. These are not golden brown, these are brown. You have to redo it. That sucks, that really sucks. Mmm. It gives you a glimmer of hope though. It still sucks. It just tastes like chips. Thank you. My Palm Maxime done at maximum speed. And I am going to put these in the oven until they are done. I don't know when it's gonna be. I'll definitely keep you in the loop. Bring that back to a boil. In with the water, all that salt. In go the leeks. I've got an extra sieve here that's gonna go kinda on top. <laughs> Maintaining that boil until those are tender. Moving along at a breakneck speed over here. Ice cubes in a bowl of cold water. Out of the boiling water, into the ice cold water. Dunk them until they have cooled completely. Struggling with these potatoes, man. They uh, are just so damn thin that you can't find the sweet spot. That might work. It could possibly maybe work. I could honestly toy around with this all night, but that's as good as I'm gonna push it tonight. I don't know. I could try this again and again and again, but yeah, we're not doing that. This is really hot. A tablespoon of brunoise, which is one part carrot, one part turnip, and one part the dark green part of the leek. And I gotta julienne these strips up and then dice them. Oy, okay, let's start with the leeks. Okay, we're just gonna make as little as we have to of this right now because I am running out of patience. And then 1 16th dice. So yeah, small as hell, man. And uh, this is a big ass carrot and I need like the smallest amount of this. Where's the peeler? There it is. So with this mandolin, I have an idea. I have a very good idea. When you have a big ass carrot like this, this thing works like a dream. Okay. What I'm trying to do as small as I can. Might not be 1 16th of an inch, but also I'm not Thomas Keller, so. So then I also need this turnip, so I'm gonna peel it. Blanching each vegetable separately. So let's start with the turnips. Into my strainer and into the boiling water until it softens up. You know what, I gotta hack it. So I'm gonna put my tiny saucepan in the boiling water. That way they don't spill out of the sieve. Cold water, get them onto the paper towel. Move on to the carrots. This is actually the water from the leeks. So it is heavily salted and you can taste it in the turnips. It's really nice. They're seasoned. Beautiful. Oh, I'm on to scotch now. I need it. Carrots softened into the cold water and then onto my paper towel. Lastly, let's get these freaking leeks in here. Into the boiling water. Great. Leeks into cold water. Onto the paper towel to drain. Do you by any chance have one of those deli containers? Yes. Um, that's perfect. All of this into this little container here. Combined forces, all three vegetables. That is the freaking brunoise. It is uh, done. Let's move on to something else. So we got to move on to this red beet essence. <sighs> I'm starting to get tired from this recipe. The hell is that doing over there? 
The mandolin glove. I don't even know how that would have happened. That is just wild. I don't appreciate the message. Uh, moving on to the red beet essence. I'm not using whole beets and then juicing those. Thomas TK, is, am I allowed to say Thomas or do I have to say Chef Thomas? Chef Thomas uh, says, no, I just called Julia Jules. Ah, Chef Thomas. So I got one cup of beet juice and this is 100% beet juice into my small saucepan. Half a teaspoon of red wine vinegar. The Burr Monte is finally making an appearance. I know that is a pound and a half of butter, but that is still really, really cool. Three tablespoons of the Burr Monte. Whoa, colorful. Few drops of this lemon juice. One, two, that's way too much. Reduce the beet juice slowly in a small saucepan to two to three tablespoons of glaze. All right, we're really gonna need to evaporate the hell out of that. Ooh, yeah. Ah, f okay, I'm getting tired, so I'm making mistakes. So with this beet thing, I was supposed to reduce the beet juice first and then add everything else. So I think I'm just gonna redo that because, you know, I don't wanna tinker around with things. So I'm gonna add in one cup of beet juice, reduce slowly down to two to three tablespoons. We got a couple other things to do, so I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Okay, I got some chives in the house. The last of this plant. This recipe is kicking the shit out of me right now. Chop these up. I'm just gonna do it kind of like, kind of fine, but kind of rough. There's no real rhyme or reason or what you should be do. <laughs> that will suffice indeed. So I believe I'm on one of the last things before I poach this lobster, which if you remember, we were, uh, we killed a lobster earlier. That was a long time ago though. Tomatoes. No, I don't always keep them in the fridge, but sometimes. So I need to figure out how to uh, make tomato diamonds. Jesus, Murph. Oh, there's a little photo here. Um, okay, so I can do that, uh, I think. I can't be bothered right now to peel this tomato the right way. Sorry, Thomas. I know you're all gonna see this and go like, what the hell is he doing? But this is, this is the way I gotta do it right now for my own sanity, I'm sorry. I don't wanna boil up more water and... You know what, I'm not even gonna peel it. I'm just gonna... I found out another way. Cut the pulp into strips. And then let's cut that diagonally. And that's my version of tomato diamonds. This may frustrate you to see this right now, but at the end of the day, I'm the only one eating this. I am the only one in the kitchen right now. I'm the only one rating myself five stars on Yelp. I'm moving on with, these are my tomato diamonds. These are my I'm so tired from this recipe. I don't, I can't even think straight right now. Snap out of it, snap out of it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is finish this dessert. It's a meal, it's a, I don't know. Let's go to the stove. What's up? You're kind of on the slant. What's up? The beet juice here, careful, is reduced down to two to three tablespoons. I'm gonna put that off to the side. I need the saucepan. So the lobster pieces are at room temperature. I'm gonna place them only on one layer on this saucepan here. I'm gonna bring enough burr monte so that they're almost covered. So yeah, they're almost covered there. Now we're not boiling this or anything like this. This is on a low heat and we're poaching this for five to six minutes. So that burr monte really has to heat up. It's still cold. So I'm gonna turn this up to a medium heat and I'm gonna watch it like an eagle. So in another saucepan, I'm gonna add in the rounds of leek. Put that onto the base of the saucepan. Chopped chives. Uh, what? Warm the leeks first. Well, the leeks and the chives now, but we're gonna warm those first. I'm gonna add in the tomato diamonds. The, uh, whatchamacallit, I can't remember what this is called. The brunoise, of course, the brunoise. One eighth cup of the burr monte. 
That's it, don't overdo it. Eh, just do a little for good luck. And I'm just gonna add like a pinch of white pepper. Now lobsters will be poached until just cooked through. I think we're there, I think we're there. Let's get this off the heat. Once this beet glaze comes up to a simmer, I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of red wine vinegar, a couple drops of lemon juice, three tablespoons of that classic Burr Monte. While everything is going on at the exact same time, we gotta get these potatoes, the Palm Maxime, into the oven to heat up. Oven's still at 300 F. Now I bought this plate specifically for this show. It's like grayish, blackish porcelain. It's like the night sky, I don't know. And I got this white plate. I use these all the time, but because we're using the red beet essence, I hope everyone is sitting down right now. We are ready to plate this son of a bitch. Spoon some of the essence on each plate and do what they always do on the shows, which is like, no. Top with a generous amount of the leek mixture. That's pretty generous. So lobster tail and the claw. Oh my God. And we're gonna break some of the rules right now since it's just me here. Since I'm making a bigger plate than uh, the French Laundry would, I think just adding an extra little more meat, the crispiest golden brown looking Palm Maxime on top. Order up. This doesn't earn a second helping. I don't know what the hell does. One of the best things I've ever cooked in my entire life. How do you beat that? It's just so much going on. Is that blood or beet? Beet. It's balancing this fine line, right? Where it's not rubbery, it's not undercooked. It is the most perfect, tender piece of lobster meat I've ever had. I love lobster, always have. Since I was a young lad and I've never had it like that before. Never tried it like that before. It was uh, exquisite. Oh, it says exquisitely tender in the book. I mean, at the end of the day, that lobster did not die in vain. Besides the lobster, what is really phenomenal about the entire thing is the burr monte. It just adds a little oomph of that butter taste into everything. The leek mixture with those tender vegetables and it's kind of like just covered in that burr monte. <sighs> red beet essence, which was incredible. It was like the sweet part of the dish. Palm Maxime on the very top, which is like, it's almost like a beautiful buttered covered potato chip. It's the crunch. Underneath, tender lobster. We don't even talk about that anymore. It's perfect. I'm gonna sleep like a baby tonight. That was hard work. This was Jamie and chef Thomas Keller in the kitchen. I'll see you later. Bon appetit.